Welcome to Backstage with Richard Ridge, Eugene O'Neill's American masterpiece, Long Day's Journey and Tonight, which is based on the playwright's own dysfunctional parents, follows the Tyrone family through their disease, ego, addiction, and codependency. The play has been brilliantly reimagined by director Robert O'Hara and has been trimmed from the close to four hours to just under two. Presented by Audible at the Manetta Lane Theater for a strictly limited engagement through February 20th, this daring and illuminating production stars Elizabeth Marble, Bill Camp, and my two guests. Please welcome Atu Blankson Wood and Jason Bowen. How are you, gentlemen? Doing all right. Doing all right. Now, listen, first of all, what I was going to ask you is how are you both and where are you both? Atu, I'll start with you. Yeah, I am in beautiful Fort Greene, Brooklyn. Um, really loving it here. Um, yeah, I'm doing well. I'm doing really well. Uh, my mantra these days is I'm challenged, but I'm content. So like this, uh, this, uh, this moment in time is really tough, but um, I, we're making our way, you know, which I, which I'm, I, it's really a testament to like the resilience everyone is you know, showing at this time. So, yeah. I Chapter. love your mantra or your yeah. mantra. That's really fabulous. Yeah. Jason, for you, how are you and where are you? I'm well. I'm coming from the, the beautiful side of Jersey City. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm doing well, man. I'm doing well. Just happy to be working on the show. And, you know, it's, it's fulfilling, so it feeds me spiritually. And I'm just out here, you know, pursuing my passion while protecting my peace. Mm -hmm. See, I love that too. Have either of you been able to put the past two years or so into some kind of perspective? Hmm. Um, I would, I would say, just about now, I'm starting to be able to sort of have some distance and perspective on, on these last two years, and uh, kind of returning to like a, a stasis and feeling like, okay, yeah, um, I, I can see a way forward. I can see what the last two years has taught. Yeah, it, it's just starting to happen, I would say, around now. Yeah. Jason, for you. Yeah, I, I'd say that um, I, I had, uh, in, as much as all of us did, I had nothing but time during the pandemic to sit and gain perspective. And I, I feel like I was actually fortunate enough to be having perspective while in the midst of it. So I understood that this was a time that will hopefully never see again. But right. as challenging as it was, that means it presented opportunities that we'll never have again. And so I really just wanted to like seize the day and and take as much take advantage of those opportunities as much as possible. So like just pursuing different things, teaching myself different stuff. And yeah, so yeah, I, I definitely I've I've gotten to that point for sure. Beautiful. Well I congratulations on Long Day's journey in tonight. It is sensational. What has made being part of this production so special for each of you? Atu, I'll start with you. I would say um, the permission to really, uh, to risk and fail has been kind of like special about this particular production. You know, um, you know, you hear a lot about, you know, like, you know, just fail, fail 99 times, get up 100. And like, that is that is um, something that has been really theoretical for me. I tend to be kind of like a perfectionist and want to like get it right. And that was just not possible in this room. We were doing something totally new with this play. So everyone involved was risking something, you know? And so there was a lot of space for failure as well, a lot of permission for failure as well. And so I, I think that's what's, what was like really special about this production is we, we really got to take full ownership of the risks we took, you know, uh, and, and what we learned along the way. Yeah. Jason, for you. Yeah, I, I definitely I would echo Atu on that, that it was there was a certain liberty that we were afforded that uh, even though, you know, um, this is my first experience with the play and you know reading it or acting in it or anything and and knowing knowing that I still knew that what we were doing was something that's never been done before and that we had been granted certain permissions that haven't haven't been allowed before. And so just even in that inherently we were just embarking on a process that that was individual, it was original, and it was also really organic. All of us got to really got to really have our say so, you know, and really have some a lot of input. Our director Robert was really gracious with that and and, and just allowed us to create. And um yeah, it was it's just it was a really beautiful experience for sure. 
Well, let's talk about Robert O'Hara. He is one of the most sought after directors. I mean, he has done a beautiful job with reimagining this production. I mean, it's not even trimmed. I mean, he actually, you know, has reinvented this incredible play as only he could do. I mean, why is he such a sought after director and what's it like working with him? Atu, I'll start with you because you worked with him on Slate Play. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's it, it's been interesting to go through that process of Slave Play with Robert, which was, you know, we were downtown in 2018. So I've had three years with Robert to like, well, four, almost four now, to grow with Robert. And then to, and now I'd be working on this project has been, it's really given me like a kind of a, a, a fuller picture of Robert as a director, but also as a writer. You know, I knew Robert first, I, I came across Robert's work first as a writer. Um, and um, and the and you're right. He has not only uh, reimagined this. He's kind of like it's it's a new it's a new play almost, you know. And I in the room even as we were all you know giving our input around like what we believe maybe the cut should look like, what moments need to stay, what need to go. Something that dawned on me was like Robert was really coming at this from the perspective of a writer. You know, and that sensibility really uh, informed the production. Um, and I think that, all, that something Robert also does is Robert's not going to hold your hand yeah. at all. And, and that has been consistent with Slave Play and this production, which, again, um, allows for our uh, ownership. You know, it allows for us to, like, really commit 110% to the choices that we are making because they are really coming from us because Robert's not going to tell us, you know, I want it like this, like you cross here on this line because we really have to find it. And that really allows us to, again, take full ownership of what we're doing. And I think that's why he's so sought after. He's also like, Robert is fearless as well. So I think there's something really um, emboldening about that as well. Jason, for you, why you think he's one of the most sought after directors and what the experience has been like for you with working with him. Yeah, that was actually Atu's last point was actually the one I was going to hammer home the most was that it, he was he was just fearless um, from the beginning of the project through the last day of rehearsal. And that that it was impossible to not have that bleed on to you as as an actor artist in the room whether the stage management team the director directorial team or the actors like all of us knew that all right we we're here we're creating our work and that's all we're going to worry about is creating our work and that that sentiment came down from robert you know and he uh, he he gave us that liberty and it was it was just really freeing to be able to come into the room and know that every day we're just going to be able to play and we're going to find new stuff and we're not going to have to worry about adhering to any certain standards that might have been set before with this particular production because we know we're doing something very different than anything anybody's ever done read or seen so we knew that when the audience was going to walk in people were going to have their own expectations but we weren't trying to live up to that because mm -hmm. we were doing something different and so it was more about people catching up to what we were doing opposed to trying mm -hmm. to fit certain molds and that, that was it was really free really free for sure See, I love that because, you know, Atu, you had said fearless and Robert's fearless, which also makes you freeing as actors, I would think. Like, he's fearless. We're going to be fearless. He's given us the permission for mm -hmm. all of us to be fearless and discover this piece together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So let's talk about these roles. Like, Jason, you had never read it before, you said, right? This was not a play you knew very well. No. Atu, did you know, did you know this play very well? Yeah, I, I, I knew this play... Um, not very well, but it sort of like lived in the it, it, just in the periphery a little bit. It just yeah. it wasn't something I thought I would ever get the opportunity to do. So I, I just never really um, like latched on. But I but I, I knew of it. You know, you don't go. <laughs> I spent like I spent seven years in conservatory total, and so like. You don't come across. You, you don't go through that without coming across this play at some point. Um, but um, yeah, it just never. It always seemed like that piece over there. Yeah. You know that other people were going to do. You know. But um, yeah. But coming coming to it in this way has made me really fall in love with the play and O'Neill in a way that I I didn't think I I would. Um, I'm now I like want to delve a little bit you know, more deeply into his work and 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 uh, and find out a little bit more about about this this amazing poet, first of all, and playwright. I think that's 
I, what I discovered about O'Neill through this process was his love of poetry. Um, and that's something that um, Edmund and, and uh, Jamie are both aligned on and something that I uh, a, a, a am very interested in. I, I love poetry. I write poetry. I, I, so that, um, that sort of grabbed me um, uh, about his writing. Yeah. See, I'd love for you to each talk about these roles that you play, mm -hmm. Edmund and Jamie, and how they've be, been reimagined for 2022. I mean, it's so different. Yeah. Atu, start with your, start with your uh, Edmund. I mean, Edmund, you know, Edmund is kind of the, I had a friend describe him as like the sponge that is sopping up all of the family's like, like uh, mess, essentially. Um, and he's at the, he's at the, he, it feels like toward, uh, in, in act four, it sort of feels like he is just at the center of this like whirlwind of people sort of like, you know, uh, 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 coming in and, and, and spilling their guts to him, you know? Um, and of course he is because essentially Edmund is O'Neill, right? So um, it, it, Edmund, it, it, yeah, he has the writer's voice in a way that um, I don't think the other characters can. Um, so I, I, I think that's kind of incredible. And I was really thinking about who he might be who like a poetic soul might be today. And it just like, so in, in, in my, in, in rehearsal and in, in, in thinking about playing the role, I really thought about like what an art, like an artistic soul today might be and how he might exist inside of this family. So that's sort of my, my tack on him, um, but yeah. And Jason, for you, for Jamie, how you see him, um, I see him as uh, as they all are damaged, um, but above all, I see him as really hurt. You know, he's he's a really hurt kid, essentially, um, because within us all, like there's still that child that we were, and you know, we just grow off of that. But um, there, there's been a certain, especially the the way where we've set it up, whereas it's set in quarantine. And so you're, you're trapped in this place with your parents and your brother in a way that you would not normally be. And so I, I feel like his, he kind of devolves back into that adolescent that he was and might have been. I saw, I see him as somebody that was probably really rebellious um, as, as a result of the trauma that he had experienced dealing with his mother, you know, a drug addict and his father was an alcoholic and just coming up in a household like that and also having been there prior to that standard being set, having seen his mother as a woman independent of drugs and seeing her, uh, you know, kind of digress into, into um, an addict. Um, so he carries that pain around. And um, yeah, I see him as somebody who's just really hurt and just trying to manage that pain as, as well as he can. And yeah, and then, you know, the, the straw breaks the camel's back when, when mom goes down, you know? Yeah. And Atu, I love that you get, you wear a mask, which I think is fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that, that was very important to Robert around yeah. this production. I think that image, right? We've all, um, I mean, I don't know. I, I was going to say that we've all become maybe a little bit desensitized to the, the mask wearing, but like, I know that actually I, I haven't. I still have these moments where I look around and I'm like, this is quick. We are all in, this is crazy. You know, um, it's such a strong image to bring the production into now, you know? And um, yeah, it just, uh, there is also something about, um, what feels like uh, almost a silencing as well of, of, of Edmund inside of this family. So yeah, yeah, it, 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 seemed, it seemed to make a lot of uh, sense for what we were saying, you know. I wanna talk about this cast, the four of you together. I mean, talk about sharing the stage with yourselves and then of course, the wonderful Elizabeth Marble and Bill Camp as your parents. I mean, the four of you together are electrifying. What is it like first being in the rehearsal room with them and now sharing the stage with them? Jason, I'll start with you. Well, first off, thank you for that. Um, it, it definitely means a lot. Um, walking into, I mean, it, 
walking into the room that very first day, it, it was, I don't know, it was it was kind of incredible just how seamless it was in terms of us just finding our natural dynamic as individuals, as artists, but then also as these characters. Like from the first read through, I personally could tell like, oh yeah, we're going to be doing something serious here. Like this is, this is something that's going to be impactful and wherever we go from here, like I feel like we could have done the reading <laughs> and and it had been something worthwhile to see. And so to know that we had an additional like five weeks of just rehearsal and just grinding out and, and really finding those moments together, I was really excited. Um, and then yeah, working with Bill and Beth is it's been it's been amazing. You know, they've they've just really just come into the room as actors, you know, and been really gracious and been open and and you know, just yeah, to to me it's just Bill and Beth. So it's just like but but like on top of them just being regular people like they're incredible artists and so above all it's just really um once again i keep coming back to this word but really freeing as an artist to know that you're coming into a room where you can trust your partners where you know people are going to be coming with ideas and you're gonna you're gonna be able to bounce off each other and be able to play in in a real organic way that obviously created something pretty special so yeah it was it was beautiful atu for you yeah, I mean, I had done, first, I, I had done a reading with Jason, I guess. When was that? Um, over Zoom. Uh, when was that? Last? The, or, or the summer last of 20. Summer, the summer. Summer, summer. summer of 2021, maybe, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think it was last. And we didn't get a chance to really interact very much until um, un until his audition. And then we got into the rehearsal room. So. I became like really excited. Well, I was really excited by him in the reading and I was like, that dude really knows what he's doing. Um, and so to walk into the room and then have the opportunity to play this closely with him was like something I was already very excited about. And Bill and, and Beth are like, I'm such a theater nerd. And I, you know, they're just, they're legends in the theater um, and so I was really excited to get into the room with them. And once I got in the room with them, you know, I, I have been learning so much and continuing to learn so much about, about how to be in a room and, 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 and how to be generous and how to advocate for oneself. And, um, and they were really, um, yeah, they were really just open with their own experiences and um, generous with their craft as well. You know, it really didn't feel like there was any sort of like, I don't know, hierarchy in the room, which you might expect when, with, when you're working with people who are as established as they are. Um, it, it, never, it never felt like that. And it continues to sort of feel like we're just four artists who are trying to, you know, come and play every night. And uh, the, I will say it's, there's a scene in Act Four with Bill that I am always thrilled to be inside of because it is never the same at all which is just such a thrilling thing as an actor, yeah. How liberating is this production for both of you as actors? Either of you can start this. Oh, well, yeah, just going off of what Atu said, I mean, it's like every night is gonna be a different show, literally. It's, it's gonna be a different show, like what the story will get told. And like, obviously there are things that we, we adhere to to make sure that it's our show. But there's going to be subtle differences and sometimes not even so subtle differences that will really affect a moment, you know, mm -hmm. and then as an actor. So you really got to be ready to to navigate that and really stay on your toes. And so, yeah, it's it's been it's just been a, a wonderful, wonderful exercise just in in acting and and teamwork and cast building and trust and you know it's, it's been it's, it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun like i i forget that the audience is there honestly which is, <laughs> you know but it, it's because we don't have time to pay attention to y'all <laughs> like we don't like we really got to be up here making that eye contact and pain like what's going on here are you, are you gonna sit down today you're not gonna sit down today you're gonna be angry today or not like am i more angry today you know so we really have to really have to be fully engaged with one one another 1000 percent of the time and it's a lot of fun a lot of fun yeah. it's 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 deeply it's deeply liberating also because just to circle back to what we like the first thing we were talking about it, I, like i feel ownership of myself as an actor in a way that i haven't 
uh, uh, previously. And I will also say that after two years of a pandemic, um, I'm sort of like voracious <laughs> when it comes to like being on stage and performing. Like, and so there's also a, a, a more gratitude <laughs> than ever in terms of in terms of being involved in, in a production and getting the opportunity to act. So I think that 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 has also shifted uh, uh, um, how I view myself as an actor. Like there's just so much more uh, gratitude, I would say, as well. Yeah. Were you doing double duty? You were doing slave play at night and rehearsing this during the day. I was, yes. That was, that was like, how did you handle that? I don't know that I did. <laughs> I got, I mean, I definitely got through it. Um, yeah. yeah. But also, again, like to circle back on that gratitude, I was just really, I felt really lucky to, to be able to be involved in both of these shows. Um, yeah, I just, this is, you know, this is what I've dreamed about since I was a kid. And it was really, uh, there really was uh, any moment I sort of felt like, oh, like this is too much. I just really leaned on the fact that I am getting to live my dream right now. Yeah. So, yeah. It's so beautiful what Audible has done with this incredible series they have. I mean, it's a Minetta Lane. It's such an intimate house. They take these beautiful masterpieces or these, you know, two character plays or whatever. I mean, what does it mean to you to be a part of this? What Audible means to you and that, you know, streaming theater and getting it out to people that might not be able to see it, what this means to you? I mean, it started for me a, a bit, like I'm, I'm gonna talk a bit about like accessibility and that, started a bit for me on uh, with Slave Play and thinking about like who's being invited, um, how does theater grow, how does theater find new audience. Um, and so to have that continued with this production is really, really exciting to really know that like, because of also the way we have contemporized it and trimmed it, right? There's people who may have thought of this as sort of like a, uh, kind of like a, a historical sort of like museum piece are now going to get to come to it in a fresh way, um, which feels really exciting to me as well to like open up uh, possible new audiences for, for this classic piece. Yeah. I love it. Jason, for you. Yeah, I, I really think it's it's an incredible opportunity for, for this piece to touch people that would not no normally have access to it or even think about it, to be honest with you. I think about folks that don't have the opportunity to come to Minetta Lane and, and see the show or who or who kids who might not have an arts program in their in their high school and get introduced to this play early in life or or whenever, you know, and might just stumble onto the title. I was like scrolling through Audible or something. And then all of a sudden from there, they now recognize, oh, this is an incredible piece of work. Let me let me dig deeper. Let me go down this particular rabbit hole opposed to just scrolling on YouTube or IG all day or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I, I think it's gonna it's gonna open a lot of doors for for people in, in in terms of entering into this world of theater. And then also the way that we have staged this, the way that we have cut it, the way that our cast has been assembled it's 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 re revolutionized the piece if you ask me and um it's it's nice to know that we're going to be able to put that in people's lap and they're not going to have to work so hard to experience it because i love the night that i was there there were so many young people there that had never experienced eugene o'neill a masterpiece i mean had not been to a theater before and were totally blown away by this i mean that must make you all feel so great yeah, it, I mean, it really does. It, like, I think ever si like, since I was a, since I started doing theater, like there's been this like sort of looming thread or like narrative around like, oh, theater's in a decline, like theater's done. Like, and I just, every, it doesn't actually happen. Theater finds a way to reshape itself. And it's also doing this in the midst of a pandemic. We, it's really difficult to ask people to come to sit in a theater, period. And so to make it accessible in this way via Audible is like really, I think just also uh, uh, signifies, you know, uh, the adaptability of theater in this moment and theater artists as well. 
I love it. Jason, for you. Yeah, I, I think it's um it's definitely it's on us as as theater artists and as theater creators to make it something that is relevant to the next generation. You know, it's it's on us. It, it the ownership is on us to make it something that they want to come see. It's you know, we we have to adjust with the times because we're not back in 1920s where there was no TV really and theater was the main form of entertainment. Now we have to compete with your phone. We have to compete with the computer, the tablet, the whatever, the screen on the train as you're going to the, th you know what I mean? There's just so much competition out there that we have to find ways to reinvent and to, and to access um, the people. And it's really exciting to know that that's, that's possible and that that's actually happening. And just like Atu said, in the midst of a pandemic, it's like when the chips are down, we're still finding our way to climb to the top. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they say necessity is the mother of all inventions. So it's like, yeah, when they take away something, you got to find something else. And that's what that's what we're doing. It's really it's actually exciting to be a part of it. And it's it's a privilege and a blessing because there are a lot of us that are challenged right now by not being able to work and all that. So it's I, I recognize our blessing every single day. Yeah. And to, we're a part of the machine that's keeping this this ball rolling is yeah it's really exciting for sure i love this my final question is if you could each sum up the best part of the experience i'm sure there's many of uh, being a part of this production what is it for each of you it's a big question hmm. i'm not i'm not saying this just because he's right here but it's playing it's getting to play opposite jason actually because Bro. But well, because we also like Jason said, we're finding things. Can we continue to find things? And there's something about the brother scene toward the end that like is so beautiful. And like you know, there's been a lot. There's there's been some discussion around like the casting about you know casting two young black men with two you know white pants. Like that's been discussed, right? But. And it hasn't really entered my mind in the production, but like there are moments I step out and I say like, you and I have an opportunity to do something that a lot of young black actors would not get to, we get to work on Eugene O'Neill in this way. And so that feels really important to me. I, I, I can't really articulate beyond that, but like I, that feels really important to me. No, definitely, definitely. Well, first of all, thank you, man. I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, definitely. It's It's, it, it is that it's working. It's this cast, you know, and and this this cast has been assembled in a way that just kind of piggybacking off what Atu said. It wasn't really about oh I, we have to stick to okay well we cast two white parents so we got to make sure our kids are white. It was like no Robert came in he had an idea he wanted to put on a production with the best actors possible that that he felt he could find and that's what happened you know and so now we're in a position where we just get to play up there with with. There are four really talented, incredible actors putting on a piece in a new way that is that that to me is incredible and really beautiful and something worth worth seeing and experiencing. And to, to be a part of that in a time that we're in right now, it's yeah, it's it's really a blessing. And to be able to you don't always get actors that you can play with in this manner and that take care of each other the way we have and it's 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 really really lovely and also yeah Atu hit the nail on the head it's like we're we're black men you know performing Eugene O'Neill performing these particular roles and the opportunity for that is razor thin you know what I mean like it's it's few and far between if ever so yeah being able to to be a part of that it's I recognize how special this is for sure yeah. Like I said, it is a brilliant production. I have seen about 12 or 14 major productions of this that I've loved all of them. And this is right up there with like the top five, the top four, and you don't miss anything. I mean, he's, you know, Robert O'Hara has chopped out almost two hours, you know, has reimagined and reinvented this. You miss nothing because the play was always so beautifully written. It was all just full of, you know, beautiful, beautiful words that, you know, it and it flies by so fast. And I also love that you don't get an intermission, which I love because the play is called Long Day's Journey Into Night. Mm -hmm. And I fascinated that we as the audience get to watch this whole family straight through. Mm -hmm. And it must be great for you to play that straight through without any breaks. Yeah. And like you said, like 
this play is a masterpiece, yeah. right? And I think any, it has earned the title of being a masterpiece because at its core, it's like deeply human. And like the language, yes, is gorgeous, but it's an embe like it embellishes upon the fact that it is at its core deeply human. So even when you whittle it down, that humanity is still there, you know? So I think that that's what's the beautiful thing about this production too. Well, like I said, we are out of time, gentlemen. But once again, Eugene O'Neill's masterpiece, Long Day's Journey in Tonight, is being presented by Audible at the Manetta Lane Theater for a strictly limited engagement through February 20th, starring Elizabeth Marvel, Bill Camp, and my two guests, Atu Blankson Wood and Jason Bowen, and of course, directed and reimagined and reinvented by Robert O'Hara. Gentlemen, thank you for dropping by today. Thank you. Yes. Out beyond the harbor where the road runs along the beach, I even lost the feeling of being on land. It was like walking on the bottom of the sea, as if I had drowned long ago, as if I was a ghost belonging to the fog, and the fog was the ghost of the sea. <laughs> you mustn't worry so much about Edmund. He'll be all right. Of course, he'll be all right. What could the finest specialist in America do for Edmund after he's deliberately ruined his health. I know all about Dr. Hardy. So you're blaming well, me, that's what you're driving at. You were mighty you would... It is a special kind of medicine. I have to take it because there is no other that can stop the pain. <laughs>